So do you see my screen? Yes, yes. Cool. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So today I'm gonna tell you about some updates that are presented in 15th release uh, of our Go language. So the highlights from the uh, uh, Go contributors are uh, that they improved the Go linker process. So now uh, it performs 20, up to 20% faster and consume uh, up to 30% less memory for this linker process. Also, allocation for small objects uh, uh, was improved. Um, the another thing that uh, is presented now that uh, common name for X509 uh, is deprecated. Also, now Go, pro Go proxy uh, supports skipping proxies that return errors. Uh, also, we have the brand new package uh, in our core library list. So the, it is called uh, time, uh, TZ data. It stands for time zone data. It is introduced for time zone uh, databases, and now we can use that. Uh, also, we have a number of core library improvements. So let's go step by step. And now I want to tell you like uh, regarding runtime updates that we have. So as I said, uh, now we have the better allocation for small objects. So um, it is faster now. Uh, also, we have modified uh, behavior for kill comment. So now when we use kill comment and our project doesn't support uh, IS uh, signal notify uh, statement. So when we receive a SIG, SEG, uh, SIG bus or SIG FPE signal, our uh, program crash with stack trace. Previously, this behavior was unpredictable. So, but now we have like some light on this process and we have stack trace for that. Um, also, we have a uh, better like improvement with the panic when we have a panic. Um, so when we have a panic of different type than bull complex float, integer string, unsigned integer or unsigned pointer, now we have the value printed instead of its address. So previously um, uh, we see only the address of uh, our variable, but now we can see the value of it when we panic. Also, we have but, uh, one more improvement of allocation. So now when we convert uh, uh, integer value into interface, so it uh, doesn't use any allocation. Also, uh, core team improved um, channels logic. So when we receive non-blocking uh, messages on closed channels, it's takes the same performance as non-block and receives on open channels. Yep, so, and I think that's all for runtime. Just let me check if I didn't miss anything. Okay, yep, so let's go to the next slide. So the improvements for the compiler. Um, so, uh, now they uh, re they presented a new safety rules for for unsafe package. So um, now we can only uh, call uns uh, um, we can cast to unsigned pointer only once when we call the function. So previously it was allowed and now it is disallowed. So now we need to. Uh, rewrite our code if we are using like uh, multiple uh, cast to unsigned pointer type. Also, our binary size reduced uh, by 5% compared to Go 114. This is because some metadata from uh, uh, garbage collector was removed. So this is why we have per, uh, reduced size by 5%. Also, we have um, 
the improved JSON optimization login for our reports. Uh, so it can be more than uh, 128 bytes. And also it can uh, include explanations of escape analysis decisions. Oh, it also copies and includes the ex explanations of it. So that's the um, most interesting from my side things from the compiler change. So let's go to the tool change. Uh, tools change. Uh, so as I said previous, uh, it was introduced the Go proxy. Uh, that the Go proxy environment variable now supports skipping the proxies that return errors. So previously, when we use the Go proxy environment variable, we put our sources like comma separated. And now if we uh, replace the comma with the pipe sign, a uh, pipe character, um, we will, in, in case of failure of the first uh, source, we will move to the second one. So when we use the comma, uh, when we re receive an error for the first uh, source, we uh, fail our, like the process of uh, proxy. So, but now if we put the pipe character between the uh, sources, we will move to the next source in our environment variable values. Also, um, timeout flag now invalidates cache for go test tool. So it's very like cool, I think. <laughs> um, yep, so also we have the new introduced environment variable that is called go mod cache. So this variable defines the, the place where our cache for our mod where, where is our cache located for our uh, modules. So the base, uh, the base path is, the, the default value is like our go path uh, way. It's like go path slash pkg slash mod as far as I remember, but now we can modify that. Also, we have the new warnings for wet tool. So um, now we have the warning for when we try to um, when we try to convert our integer value to string uh, in such a way so now it will cause the warning because uh, they the the go team uh, was rethinking about that logic and they assumed that this is uh, the, the the most people the most part of uh, developers uh, don't use uh, this conversion in the proper way so it, as it was designed previously so they just re rethink that logic once again and introduce this new warning so now when we convert uh, integer to string in such way we will receive the warning um, and also uh, they will um, they will introduce the logic that it will break our build in future releases but like we cannot do that in the first version of Go because we have a promise of uh, one version for Go. So that is why this is introduced as a warning for wet tool now. The same uh, way, the same logic for uh, impossible interface conversions. So now we will see the warning when we cannot um, convert interface to another interface because it is like impossible. So in the future, in a second version, this will not be allowed by a compiler. So we will not see and uh, we will not see warning, but and but our program will not compile too. So, but now this is just like um, this is like this is working like a warning for a web tool. Yep. So let's move forward. So also we have some of core library updates. So the, as I was said previously, uh, we have the new embedded package called TZ data. Um, so this uh, package holds uh, data that, that helps us to work with the time zone databases. Also, uh, we have the new translation from the C type of EGL config to Go type of unsigned pointer. Uh, 
Uh, also, uh, we have deprecation of a common name in X509. Uh, and also we have some minor changes to the core library uh, that are very useful. For example, for testing package, um, uh, our test main function is no longer required to call OS exit at the end. If a test main, uh, if a test main function returns, uh, uh, returns, the test binary will call OS exit with the value returned by, M, by the test run. So, that is this cool because uh, yeah, uh, on our project we had an issue with that because when we start the testing for the whole package everything works fine but when we started the test by test we had an error because uh, when we use the test main function uh, we just like put os exit with the zero code without any checking uh, of the result from the test run so that is the trap that we faced like maybe one year ago, two years ago, two years ago. So, but now this is controlled by the test library. Also, the new methods for test library introduced, that is very useful, I think, that uh, the methods are called temp, uh, temp dir. So it, um, it returns the string that contains the path to the temporary uh, temporary directory that will be removed after the test will finish. So previously uh, we we like do that logic manually. So we created the file, we removed the file, but now we have the, uh, the method that will do that for us. Also, we have the chain updates to the encoding JSON package. So now it has internal uh, limit for nested fields. So, ne sorry, not nested fields, but nested depths. Uh, it is 10,000. So, yep, just keep in mind that it, it has changed. Also, we have uh, the new method for database SQL package. So we have it, it, it is called set con set con max idle time uh, so it allows removing a connection from the connection pool after it has been idle for a period of time uh, so this is like how to use a connection to a database uh, with the common sense also we have some uh, new methods in a sync package it is called uh, map load and delete so it automatically deletes a key and returns the previous value of uh, value of it if present also the map delete is more efficient now so and many other small changes in the core library that are described by this link you can follow them and find anything specific if you want to so, so I think that's all from my side. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.